guys today i have someone really really exciting eric thank you so much for joining and eric is someone that has uh um, that has found like dr david hawkins work the letting go book and he was in like a really really terrible place used the technique and got out and by terrible i mean like terrible with like heroin addiction and stuff like that right so let's just start there like like where when did you actually realize that you know damn i need to like do something about this mm-hmm. you know oh first of all it's a joy to be here and thank you so much it's a joy to be here it's such a joy to be here, honestly to speak about letting go to speak about divinity just there's nothing sweeter on his planet so yeah uh the first time i tried heroin i remember the first time i tried heroin and it was injected right yeah and i remember the energy came up like this and i knew immediately two things <laughs> that i wanted to feel this way for the rest of my life i knew i wanted to feel this way for the rest of my life nothing else on the planet came, even came close and the second i knew i was screwed for the rest of my life <laughs> i knew that's it in one second the whole wow. world changed all world changed so i i remember that how many that years back was this i was 17 whoa so yeah, i was 17 so yeah, yeah. 20 and change years yeah so uh yeah and so i'll give you just because the desperation will show the power of god and the power of letting go mm-hmm. so when i was 19 years old I was in the back seat of my mom's car. It was my mom and stepfather driving, and I was already shooting heroin for for a year and a half. And and I was so desperate, and I would only shoot in this vein, in this vein. Mm. So I remember being in the back seat thinking this made sense that if I burn these two veins off, I will stop. That made sense to me. So I took a cigarette, I smoked then and multiple times on this this vein like I still have the scar like that oh, let it did it again so it was all like this and then took a lighter you know cigarette lighter like this got it really 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 hot really really mm-hmm. hot and then went like this Whoa. and burned off both like that just gives an example of the desperation which i i mean of course that does you know and that same day i learned how to use my right hand that's all that happened <laughs> i learned how to inject here that's all that happened. So and that was that was uh at 19 and I didn't get sober till 29 years old. So can you imagine 10 29. more years 29. So Damn. another 10 years of that. So that that's just that alone like shows the state. Yeah. Uh a few months before I so I remember you know our doc Dr. David R. Hawkins doc talks about being in hell. and i uh, can't come close to his but i remember i remember lying to my mother mm. and getting her to send me $500 which was a lot of money yeah. for us right she never did it like one time she did it because i said i was going to pay for the rent yeah uh i spent all $500 on dope on drugs immediately and then i anyway and i knew that there was no more money and no more energy to get any more that was not an option anymore and just i remember sit laying in the like the apartment which i was going to be thrown out of in a couple of days because i didn't have the rent and looking up at the ceiling feeling like i am condemned for the rest of my life i remember like every minute was like an hour i so i don't know how long i looked up at the ceiling but i felt the hell that i've so like hell. what did the hell feel like like did you feel anxious hopeless hopeless complete condemned for the like condemned i felt like literally like, life was a prison sentence i felt like i was going to be this way for the rest of my life and there was absolutely no hope of any kind i tried meetings i tried going you know I tried moving tried all that But, like no hope like a, a hopelessness hit this consciousness that it has never experienced before and it was so uh and that i don't know how long it was there but it felt like 
a hundred years. I remember being in that white apartment. Everything was so there was nothing in it, just a white ceiling. And I'm looking, you know, sitting on looking up at the white ceiling. Anyway, I just remember that state so well. It's been <laughs> it's been a while. Were you like still. on heroin? Were you like contemplating this, or were you like off the drug? You didn't have any drug anymore. I I I was. I knew I, I had, I used the last shot and I knew there was no more money and no more drugs. No more money and no more drugs. Uh, and there was no energy to get money or drugs because you have to live very not integrously. There was no energy to that. So there was no more dope. You know, my mom, I spent her fi last $500. Like I knew I was going to be thrown out of just despair. Friend, like Anyway, so, and for the first time, I'm like, called out to God for help hmm. you know and it seems like every addict or alcohol not not just that in this case uh, yeah. that has their bottom like the bottom is not like being homeless that for, for people it's different the bottom seemingly is the state where the dying or the person calls out for help truly from their heart that seems yeah. like the bottom for some people they still have an apartment and they live well they have cars other people they have to be homeless for okay so anyway and what happened was a few months later yeah. this is amazing a few months later uh i was shooting dope i was living with a girl uh we hated each other yeah. we hated each other but you know but whatever but okay so she calls the police on me damn and and this is already in this is in South Florida. And I remember Prem, like, of course, as I've done many, many times before, I wanted to run away, you know? But something in this this state said no. And I sat down. And of course, the drug addict in me wanted to hide the drugs and everything like that. You know what I mean? So and I waited. And when the police came, look at this is a miracle. When the police came, I stood up, I took hands in the pocket took out all the drugs and gave it to the police officer and said, I can't stop. Please help me. Damn. That's, that is grace. That is, <laughs> no, no drug addict does that. That is straight a miracle. And then was facing 12 years in prison just mm -hmm. for that. And, but only a few months later was doc, the spiritual awakening going to come into my heart for the first time. How did he you find know? him? In prison? How? Yeah. Uh, I was I was in prison for a while. And then uh, I went to a drug rehab. Mm -hmm. Court ordered. Court ordered, meaning it's okay. And all right, I'm going to tell you. There was a girl there. There was a girl there that I really liked. And I wanted to her. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. Every, every, every guy wanted to her yeah and i did and plus i wanted the pride of being the one who could do it which i knew yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway so she there were only three doc books out power versus force i the i and i only this was 2004 yeah and and uh so i start i came up to her i knew she would not have anything to do with me i was a criminal you know what i mean so i started reading the doc books first like exposure to spirituality with the from my my intention was i'm sorry to say was yeah, yeah no it's fine it's that was, that, was, yeah. that was my intention it was not to get god and sleep with her part of that reason was also the pride of being the only one of everybody yeah who, who, I've, who I've done so it's pride and lust there's no yeah. integrity there's you get no the approval as well so the yeah, approval kind of and the applause the ego loves applause, being applauded yeah. so like you know right so everybody go okay so that's 100 percent. that's hilarious that you know thank god the lord is not limited by our limitations. Thank God yeah. the Lord is not limited by my, because my intention was way below 200, way not integrous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. Started reading the books with the intention of impressing her. And after about, I remember being in the drug rehab reading with the intention of impressing her after chapter four in Power Versus Force, like there was a melt, a meltdown. And I knew I found home for the first time in my life. And you, like, it came like this. I knew what I always looked for in heroin and sex and everything on the planet in her. And, you know, like there was a realization. Finally found. And that was 2004. I remember it, May 2004.
so 19 plus years old and uh wow well, that and that and okay and also power of god so i i you know when i went to court after a few months in jail the judge said listen this from i had four felonies and three misdemeanors which is a it's a long time in jail okay yeah uh and the judge said you know you can go home today but you're on probation I mean, so where they test your their your pee, you know what I mean? They have to test you for drugs and for a long time. And if you pee one time dirty, like if I if I if I use drugs one time, I'm going to prison for twelve years. Yeah. And so it's like a one last chance kind of thing. One last chance. And I and uh, I told the judge that true story. Holy Spirit came in and said, "Your Honor, if you let me go home today, I will have a needle in my arm today." That's also, and like everyone, because I was the only one who could go home, and all the other prisoners. Because okay, when in jail, when you talk to the judge, you're handcuffed, one to the other person and one to the chair. So you're like talking to him like this, you, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, and everybody went like, and someone said, "What an idiot!" I remember that. Like I could have gone home, but I knew, that, you know, I knew. Not ready. Uh, not ready. Exactly. Hundred percent, not ready. So after a year and a half to draw, you know, doing all that, I came back to the judge, and the judge said, so "You've seen the spiritual awakening," and she said, "The spiritual awakening in you, like she's seen the transformation, and she dropped all charges. Wow, all seven charges dropped. Amazing, right? That is the power of God. So, yeah, if, if you guys get, if anyone gets anything out of this, forget that it's the, the student." It's the power of God has no limitation, and just interesting power of God is. So when it, when we do letting go, when this student is letting go, you know, I hook up to the to the divinity, and I'm trying mm. to do it on my own because the ego has no interest or capacity or inclination to let go of anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's right? interesting. Yeah. So what was that realization? If you don't mind me asking. What was the realization? What do you mean? Yeah, like you said, you had a realization that was like transformative, chapter four. Oh, that what I was looking for. You just found that need- something like just click in, clicked in your mind, and you're yeah. like, okay, fuck, I like found that. it. Exactly. Probably, and it was probably yes. Fuck, I found it. Hundred percent. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> that's hundred percent. That's exactly yeah. it. No, no, that's correct. There wasn't any spiritual language on this, yeah, this yeah. you know. It yeah, was just yeah. it found out what I was looking for my whole life in women, in drugs, and everything, and being cool, being trying to be tough, and all this working out, exercising, all yeah. that. Like I realized in that moment, found yeah. like you know. So yeah. something, something, uh, in what he wrote resonated very deeply in your heart. Yeah, and it was a uh, chapter. Four. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go on. Chapter four. I remember in power where, where he talks about the scale of consciousness and each level of consciousness. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. how everything, everything has a vibration. Yeah. Everything has, no matter what it is, from every thought to every intention, every word, every deed, every, it all has a vibration. You yeah, know what I mean? and like. I what I love about your story and what I find in my experience as well I think being honest is like one of the qualities to let go I think we I think most people are 100%. not honest with themselves you know like you know uh, I think uh, 100% if someone is like feeling bad they're like oh I'm not feeling that bad you know <laughs> yes like, 100%. 100% and uh, and I think I, that kind of creates a veil and it kind of like, uh, yeah. it's like a red herring. 100%. And I think the transformation, I think, uh, I think God was like a permission slip for you to like, uh, be honest, uh-huh. not just with yourself, but with other people as well. Yeah. Right? 100%. First time, first time, uh, first time I lied about everything. Stuff that needed to be stuff. Like I was never okay with what I was. So I'd always have to embellish, you know, make yeah. this, make myself, you know, a teaching uh, 
that, you know, the ego, like you have a garden, the ego wants to be the most beautiful rose, the most beautiful rose. But if it can't be the most beautiful rose, then it wants to be the ugliest weed, anything, 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 anything other than being just another humble blade of grass. No matter what, that's the worst. You know, if it can't be the best, it wants to be the worst. Anything than just to be ordinary. And Doc teaches about being ordinary, you know? Mm. So, yeah, for the first time, I could have, I had, I was given the power to not lie to myself, to others. You know what I mean? I was never okay with what I was. It, yeah. yeah, that's another thing. The spiritual first thing that happened was I was, for the first time in my life, okay. You know, because I have a brother, when I grew up, I have a brother in New York who makes, he makes a lot, to this day, he makes a lot of money. He's very, like a shark, businessman shark. Yeah. So, you know, and so, and I always look like the loser <laughs> compared yeah. to him. You know what I mean? Because I never cared about yeah, yeah. that. Right? Uh, and so I felt it was the first time in my life after chapter, after aligning with God for the first time in my life was, it was okay to be that and not, you know, and not, mm. I don't, not everybody's a shark. And he can be a shark, yeah. and God bless him. God bless him. I don't have to be. I pretend. I faked trying to be like him, and I was not. I was never good at it, so I would always fail. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I, I think there's one thing about rock bottom. I think when you reach to like that mm. level, it's just like, what are you even lying yeah. about? You know, you're already like. Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. Yeah, you already like are fucked by life. Hundred you know percent. Like yeah, like, you huh? have been fucked by life. Yes, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's hundred percent. But yeah. f- like fuck, fuck by one's own nature. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? true, like, true, true. Which it's a rite of you know, passage, like, you know? Rite of passage. So yeah. So what helped also? Okay, so there's the twelve steps. Another thing I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. And our teacher, you know, Doc talks about it. You know, on the scale of consciousness, the twelve steps to five hundred forty. Mm. And the first step, what you said, the first step is honesty. Mm. And pretty much, we're not going to go over the 12 steps, but the first step pretty much says that I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. And as long as I think I'm not screwed, you know what I mean? So yeah. you, when you said not ready, so like if I work with someone in AA or, you know, the 12 steps, uh, uh, you know, if someone is not ready, me like forcing it on them, will only make their bottom longer and worse. So if I feel someone's not ready... You're delaying you know, their bottom. Delaying their bottom and prolonging and making it more miserable. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So if I feel someone's not ready, you know, if someone is not willing, that's okay. They just haven't got to that point yet. I, it, You know, in the 12 step, it says it takes what it takes. It takes what it takes. So if one is not at that level, you know, me trying to save them, which we don't do that. Try, you know yeah. what I mean? Inst- no, I understand. Some people go, drink, shoot heroin for a few more years, and then we'll talk. And that's it. And so what? And if one dies, so what? The soul, the soul is eternal. So yeah, only the body, only the body can drop. So and all bodies are going to drop. Every single human being on this planet, one day no. the body is going to drop. So what? You know. <laughs> so I understand. This one, so. I, yeah, I think uh, when when you feel hopeless, you know, I think what it the what that feeling is indicating is a lack of options. You see, like no option to like move forward. No right? options, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So like, the feel so aligning with divinity, seemingly aligning with you know. Yeah. All right, completely changes one's options. Yeah. You know, so that's another thing. That fourth chapter, just reading, you know, part in drug rehab for the first time, there were options. Like mm. wow, I don't have to. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I can, I can just. Your be. mind was like, open that, to the possibility. Yes, the possibility. And like, you know, seemingly the world is con- concerned with having and doing, as our teacher teaches, you know, having this, doing this. Uh, for the first time with it, with God, I can be, I can just be. I don't have to do things to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can just be. And now, you know, consciousness reached the point where this this student's goal in life, intention in life, to the best of his abilities to be able as kind and loving as he can be at any moment with everyone in all circumstances without exception uh to including self that's a hard way including self yeah. um without exception and if i some that was revealed is if that is my intention in life to the best of my ability which I, by the way i fail at this freaking every day so but uh the, if the intention the overall intention is to be as kind and loving as i can be to all beings including myself 
Mm -hmm. uh, to the best of my ability, everything else is handled. I don't have to worry mm -hmm. about money. I don't have to worry about rent. I don't have to worry about like sex and everything else is handled. Like it, so that's another thing, the spiritual awakening and my teacher, you know, our teacher has given me is like, instead of 5 million intentions, one intention, be as kind and loving as I can be to the best of my ability, uh, which without is not always easy, as you know, without expecting anything. And then everything else is taken care of. Yeah. Like, I don't have to I worry about anything else like that. You know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. and also the willingness to, you know, the willingness to die. I mean, I'm not seeking it, but the willingness to, if, if that will serve divine will for, for this body, to, okay. If it will serve for it to live a hundred years, okay. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like a, yeah. that, you find a deep meaning in the had. way of living. Yes, hundred percent. And, you know, before there was always like a, a, all these intentions and everything, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I want this, this heart to the best of his ability wants to be the most loving and kind servant he can be. Yeah, and that's it. You know, remember there were the, you know to not go into the news or anything, but you know yeah, there yeah. were these guys, the billionaires who were in the submarine, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. So you know, I don't know much about it. Honestly, I learn about it through. I don't really watch the news. Yeah, just because yeah, I haven't, I haven't re reached the level spiritually where I can watch the news and not be within five minutes. I'm racist. I'm sexist. You know what I mean? So I, I'm yeah. not at the level where I can watch the news and be okay with it. So I don't put myself in that position. But anyway, so I seen it, this, and uh, at that moment when they, I don't know what, if it's the pressure or if the air is ending or whatever, like n the ch billions of dollars means nothing. Like yeah, nothing, none of that. The only thing that matters is what I am. The only thing I can take with me is what I am, what I've become. Everything else stays here. Freaking, you know, yeah. money, Possessions, everything stays here. The only thing I can take with me is what I am and what I have become. That's it. So, and just, you know, I, I learned a lot from that. And at that moment when the air was ending, all that didn't matter. Just for even another, another breath of air, one would give everything up. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, the spiritual path has also given me, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about how, uh, you know, even a little bit of progress in this path in chapter two. Uh, make you know make someone okay with the worst type of fear the fear of death mm -hmm. so like that was another a fear you know what i mean it's like yeah, yeah. okay everyone everyone every human being as as doc says being a human is 100 percent fatal yeah 100 percent fatal everyone dies so whether it happens then or now okay so what how can i yeah. serve the oh lord you know what I mean? anyway yeah that's the I try. Sometimes I freaking fail that miserably and yeah, yeah. egotistical and selfish yeah. and all that. So I don't want to pretend like I'm, but that's the intention. The intention yeah. is to be that. Okay. That's the North Star. You want to talk about letting go? That's the North Star. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. That's the yeah. hundred percent. Uh, that's, I love that. Wow. I never heard that. I love that. Yes. That's Polaris. That's the North Star. Yeah. That's the intention. And of course, humanness, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think also, that's very interesting. Yeah. I think what I found very interesting about the story is even uh, during the age of 19, where you're in the back of your, uh, the, in the car with your parents and stuff, you're still thinking to like shoot heroin. But there's mm -hmm. still this part of you that's trying to like protect you from not doing it. Because, you know, automatically, mm. you know what I mean? And that's yeah, the part the that's self. like trying to, yeah, that's the strategy that's yeah. possibly trying to help, but that self mm -hmm. itself feels so helpless because, you know, the ego is also coming up with like a lot of noise, a lot of options, right? <laughs> A lot of more appealing uh, options than, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. And I think the mm. self is just handicapped in that position. And I think you have allowed mm. that space, a part of you that already wanted to like help you, you know, to like help you in a way it knew how, the best way it knows how, yeah. you know. Yeah. To, to this understanding, the ego has no capacity, nor inclination, nor desire to surrender. So, it's more like I was surrendered. <laughs> yeah. Just like just like doing the letting go program, I don't let go, you know? Instead, by grace, I call upon the power of divinity, which then does that for me, <laughs> which is a whole yeah. different deal. You yeah. know what I mean? So letting so, go yeah. sounds like a consequence rather than a, an action. 100%. 100%. So okay. uh, mm -hmm. you want me to give you the... I can tell you how it's been... Yeah. How this... 
Okay, how this consciousness sees it at this time, grain of salt. Yeah, I'm no, sure at no, another no. level. At another level, this is bullshit. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. What I'm <laughs> so, so you <laughs> yeah. know, so yeah. Um, okay, so so and we're gonna uh, we're gonna refer to the scale. Okay, so uh, can you explain the scale because no one knows the scale in the, in the YouTube okay. channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So there's the map of consciousness. Mm. All right. So anything and everything since the beginning of time to now uh, has a vibration. Mm. That vibration, the vibration, the vibration goes by intention, the intention of that, not the actual, the the intention behind it. Okay. So everything that has ever existed, from thoughts to feelings to ideas to to, to people to to whatever political, all of it, religions, to to little things, to food, to every single thing, is somewhere along the scale. Okay. Doctor Hawkins uh, mapped out the scale from one to 1000 okay yeah. uh the dividing line is 200 so 200 everything below 200 you could say is not integrous so the fields of pride before that anger before that uh desire yeah. fear and all that okay so above 200 is the level of integrity where that you could say that energy becomes positive okay yeah. and so every single thing has is on that scale rather than me giving you some freaking Horrible explanation. Anybody who's interested, it's so worth it. Check out Dr. David R. Hawkins and check out yeah. the scale. That's just a side note. Yeah. Even I just if, wanted to add to the scale. Yeah, I'm sorry. You did. On. No, it, I'm saying even if you don't hear a word, any other word that this student says, so what? Yeah. yeah. Let the main thing, if if this, even a little bit, bring someone to Doc. Doc is Dr. David R. Hawkins, but his students call him Doc and if that even if this life, honestly, if this life even a little bit brings someone even a little closer to the capital itself, but specifically the doc, then it's then it's life worth living, honestly. Yeah. The, the nicest thing I can honestly say, the most kind thing that has ever been done, including sobriety, including sobriety and not sticking needles about the nicest thing that has ever been given me, this this student ever, was the gift of Dr. David R. Hawkins, doc, when I was ready for it. And of all the gifts I've given others, taken people through the 12 steps, whatever, you know, money, whatever, whatever, the best gift I have ever given anyone else by grace is the gift of Dr. Deva of Doc when someone was ready for it. I can honestly say that if one, you know, you know if it's one's karma, if it's one's destiny, to check it out, the, the truth of this might come to you. Okay? Yeah. So anyway, so check out the scale of consciousness. Check out the scale of consciousness. So, so one... One to one thousand, one is the lowest that ever, you know. Um, one thousand is the level of the avatar. The avatar is that which the highest calibrating in the planet. Jesus Christ, yeah, of course, Buddha, the the Buddha, Krishna, Ram, yeah. right? Okay, so uh, the avatar, the one that after them, a, a whole religion started and everything, which then dropped. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm but okay, so uh, so not going to further. Okay, so letting go is contextualized by this. By this consciousness, so that a ne you know a negative energy comes up, right? Let's say it's one hundred on the scale, which is the energy of fear, right? Comes up immediately. The mind says, "The reason I feel this is because of blank out there." Yeah, it's the nature of the mind. It's the nature of the mind to always give a cause to every feeling, whatever the feeling from the lowest to the highest. It's because of something out there. Okay, so the you know this energy, let's say one hundred comes up, uh, you know, and uh, the mind says you feel this because of blank out there, and without most of the world doesn't even know that there is an option to say no. Yeah. <laughs> to even yeah. say wait a minute, to, to even say so if the mind tells me I feel a certain thing, and even to go wait a second maybe not literally yeah. is a miracle. It cannot come from the ego. That's a major thing, and ninety something percent of humanity does not even have that option. So the negative energy comes up. The mind says it's because of blank. And the thought that maybe it's not is not, the ego is not capable of it. And 90, high 90%, you know, of humanity doesn't even know yeah. that there's an option. Okay. Yeah, it's like all so, consuming uh, and narrow vision. It's like 100%. looking through a pinhole, right? 100%. 100%. Yeah. So to even go, wait a second, you know, let's say the energy feels like fear and the mind says it's because, you know, I don't have enough money for rent right yeah so 
generally a normal person just says yes, doesn't know that there's an option, says yes, and then, you know, that level is 100, let's say, on the scale, you know, negative energy. And then so everything he does, everything one does from that level is at 100. So if the energy is at fear, the mind says, I can't pay the rent. You know, I say yes to that. Then I do create a whole lot of karma, whatever you want to call it, a whole lot from a certain vibration of fear. So yeah. all the, the karmic consequence, the karmic consequence will be at that same level. Mm. Right. So, okay. So the fact that there's an option that when the mind says I'm feeling this because of blank and even to go, wait a second, maybe not yeah. just that alone is literally a miracle. That is a miracle, miracle, miracle. It cannot come from the ego. So to even like question the mind is already a miracle, miracle, miracle. miracle. I, I wanted to like, you know, uh, state that because so compassion comes from most seemingly most of humanity their mind says something i'm angry because of blank you know and they go and the thought that maybe wait a second maybe maybe not is not that that option is not even most of humanity is not even capable of that so compassion right yeah. so uh, now this energy, same energy comes up. The mind says, it, it feels like fear. The mind says, it's because I don't have the money for the rent. And by yeah. grace, literally a miracle of the Holy Spirit, by whatever name. Uh, and I say, wait a second, maybe not. Maybe not is a miracle. Okay, so what I do and how I do letting go is when this energy, it's, and most of the time, and probably the people who are watching this interview, anybody who watches this, most of that feeling is going to be right here in this physical spot. Almost 90%, probably more than that. It's going to be in this physical spot. So what I do, and when one does this for a while, one gets good, you know, one gets sensitive, right? This part. So, so uh, the, you know, feeling, physical feeling here, the mind says you're feeling this because of blank. Immediately, I, what I do, I call upon God immediately. By whatever name, I call upon the avatar, Jesus Buddha, Krishna, whatever, uh, my teacher, right? Immediately, I take responsibility for this energy. I don't, you know, because saying I feel this way because of blank puts the, the source of the power out there. The reason I'm full of this energy is because I'm full of this energy <laughs> and not because of anything out there. So that's a, that's a major point. So that takes grace to own my own emotional negative state, to say I feel this energy of 100 not because of i didn't pay the rent or i can't pay the rent i feel it's 100 because i'm full of 100ness <laughs> that's simple so i own it i take responsibility for it immediately i call on jesus whatever god however it, that doesn't matter okay and then i i focus right here yeah and i ask for more of it that's the main part of it i focus here the hardest part is to not follow the mind. The hardest whole part of this exercise is to not follow the mind because because people can say what they want about the mind, but no one can say that it is not good at what it does. It is wow. amazing at what it does or what it is. Mm, it's yeah. very convincing. It's very convincing. So to not follow the mind. So the energy comes up. The mm -hmm. mind says it's because of blank out there to say, wait a second. No. Call upon God. And focus like a laser to the best of my ability right here, this yeah. physical point, and to ask for more. That's the thing, to ask for more. And the way I ask for more is I focus on here. This is how I do you know, grain of salt is, Lord, if it's within thy will, please give me more of this energy. And I focus here. Interesting. I, I do it with two prayers. Lord, if it's within thy will, please give me more of this energy. And number two, Lord, if it's within thy will, please make me willing to feel out every single drop of this energy. And then I go into here and jump into here. It's always here. It's always here. Mm -hmm. So I jump into it like, like a swimming pool, like a swimming pool where it's like when one gets good at it, like one becomes this point, you know, if like, you know, there's like point this right here, this physical point and not point everywhere else. But when one gets, you know, practices in this, it's like one becomes this point. Like it's a swimming pool and one jumps into it. And when one jumps into that point, one literally goes through it. What could be 10 years, a, a lifetime of karma of this negative energy in literally hours when you get good at it, a few minutes. Yeah. A few minutes. 
So if two liters of this energy comes up, right? So if I, if the, the mind says it's because of blank, if I follow the mind, then that what happens is that same two liters is coming out, but like a drippy fart faucet, faucet. Right here, I get into an argument with my partner. You know, drop here, I get into an argument at work. Drop here, I'm worried about the rent. Blah, blah, blah. Drop, drop, drop. So the same two liters is coming out. However, if I, when this, when this negative energy comes up, I take responsibility for it. I own it. I don't pretend like it's not there. I don't act on it. And I do not, here's the major part, the hardest part. I do not follow the mind. The mind tells me I'm feeling this blank. What? I say no. Call upon divinity. Go into it and ask for more of it. That same two liters, which would drop out with like a drop here, ruin my life here, drop here, make other people miserable. Blah, blah. The same two liters will come out when I get good at it, literally in a few minutes. If one gets good at it, one focuses all their energy and you don't have to like sit in meditation. Like, you you know, I do yeah. it when driving, I do it when washing the dishes, the energy comes up immediately. I go into it, I call upon God and immediately ask for more of it and dissolve all resistance. Ask for more of it to jump into it. And literally that same energy, which would have came out miserably in 20 years of bringing misery to everyone else can in minutes be dealt with and handled. And according to the avatar, according, you know, uh, once if, you know, once this energy is given up to God and felt out and someone doesn't follow the mind, that karma is done. It's done. But if I follow the mind, then I'm creating more karma at that level. Okay, that was a lot of words. No, I understand. You're welcoming the emotions. Welcome. With welcoming and not even welcoming, asking for more and like literally jumping into it like a swimming pool. Like Yeah. That's so interesting. Oh, the the video hmm. I made about uh, David Hawkins as well is literally that. That exact really? I can, I'll say, yeah, I'll send it uh -huh. I'll send the video you can take, watch it when you're free. Um but I can tell you uh, this uh, this thing because i don't believe in god i mean i don't i don't like believe in like any specific god i believe in like the idea of god and when i'm like re and when life fucks me i'm like yo please, god please you know like you know i believe in you now you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> that I kind do. of a guy I do. I'm, I'm, I'm like i'm like when casually spiritual <laughs> yeah i'm like casually spiritual is what i how okay. i put it right. yeah so <laughs> that's so, adorable yeah so <laughs> But I can relate to, with what you're saying in a very similar way. Because what mm. the map of consciousness is actually mapping is this map of your emotion. Like how a certain mm. thing is triggering a certain emotion within you. And that's the scale is, that's been mapped, right? So I was just looking at that point one day. And I'm like thinking to myself. And I realized, you know, everything I did for like past, like I'm doing this, like, you know, trying to like figure it out understand how to let go for like like uh, eight years nine years like that for eight nine years i like spent a lot of time study a lot of people i'm looking at this center of energy i'm looking at this energy and thought even the act of me looking at that point was an attempt for me to like let go of that you know what i mean and i yeah, think I uh, uh, the, the ego is trying so desperately to become like a king or to be like a king like person or to be like a god like person you know that I, that, that I, I kind of forgot that, you know what? This is what it's like to be a human. I'm a human being. This is like, what's it be a human being? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Cool. I'm a human. I feel emotions and this is my emotion. You know what I mean? So I just said, mm -hmm. you know what? Cool. And I realized when, whenever we we're looking at that emotion, right? That, in, that energy, we are looking at something prehistoric. Like we might not exactly know what dinosaurs look like, but we sure know what dinosaurs felt like. Probably like yeah. this, you know. Probably this energy yes. is just trying to convince the dinosaurs. Go catch some prey or uh, hungry right now. Oh, damn, the meteor is coming. Like, run, you know. Some... Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> true. Like, yes. yeah. That is very aligned with what with Doc teaches. Very aligned. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. And, uh, yeah, we are looking at something that not only, like, all humans experience or experienced... Oh our will experience, but also all life forms as well. So I was looking at, I'm looking at something that's like part of reality. I'm looking at something that is like reality, an aspect of reality, you know? And me trying to like eliminate that aspect of reality is almost like me trying to like, trying to get rid of trees or something. You know, <laughs> you can't get rid of trees because it's part of like nature, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, 
So, a understanding that is that is very helpful. Every ego is about the same. That understanding. Mm. So, from from Adolf Hitler and the worst, you know what I mean, and the serial killer, all the way up, all the way up to scale, you know, to even the Christ. Every level of consciousness exists within all humans. Yeah. So, because every ego is the same, and I have every level of consciousness. So if I hate someone, yeah. I'm really hating myself. You know? So for example, if I hate the murderer, the serial killer, the murderer, because he has 10 liters of hate, but I have four liters of hate, because I also am full of hate, you know, I'm really hating myself for my four liters and not him for his 10. Similarly, the rapist, which I know it's rough, it's rough. But, you know, I may not, by grace, have ever had, you know, you know, been lustful enough to uh, rape a woman. Thank God, right? But, but I have done many stupid things out of desire, out of lust that I re regretted for. So I may not have done the 10 liters of the rape, but I done four liters of being non-integrous, cheating on my girl, whatever, and all that stuff. So it's the same. So to hate the rapist, for example, for him being that way, I'm really hating myself. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm just, by grace, I have less, <laughs> less of that energy in him, but I still have plenty of that energy. Yeah. So I understand what you're so saying. So the ability, I cannot condemn anyone out there and forgive myself. Mm. I also cannot forgive anyone out there and condemn, you know, to the exact degree. So yeah. that's another thing. Like, all of humanity is one ego. There's only one ego. All all beings, every ant, like you throw a cat in the air and it like like that and it lands perfectly. That I have the yeah. same ego. When I fall, I'm trying to uh, you know what I mean? And yeah. the last thing the ego wants to do when it's falling is let go. Because like if you like if you slip right now, right? For that one second that you're falling, in that moment you're like, uh, right? Every ego, uh, right? And the last thing at that moment. The ego wants to do is do this. But the whole spiritual path is about this. It's not about getting more things. It's about letting go. It's not about yeah. getting truth. It's about letting go that which is not the truth. You know? So it's like almost like one in the spiritual path is walking completely in the opposite direction of the ego. That like all of evolution since the beginning of since the dinosaurs was geared to survival was geared to getting more, was geared to greed, was get it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And one in spiritual path is doing the opposite. One is letting go, you know, completely letting go even of life itself, of, of self, you know, of the little self. So it's like, yeah. Letting and go. Only by grace. That's an interesting yeah. word, letting go. Because I think what you're trying to say is from what I understand is just that, let's say I'm hating someone I might not have committed the sin that he has committed, right? Whatever, or crime, uh -huh. right? But I have some of that energy within me. And whatever 100%. he's doing is kind of like resonating, the, something, resonating the same thing 100%. within me as well. And the 100%. ego is reacting because you haven't, but yeah. you're projecting that outside. 100%. Right? So the, the more I hate him, I'm really hating myself because <laughs> there's only one ego. Yeah, he's like triggering like a resonance to your uh, of like the hate that's already within yeah. you almost. Hundred percent. So, so with that understanding, yeah. with that understanding, there's compassion. So, and also any kindness, whether one believes in God or not, that's a second. Any kindness I have, any love, to this understanding, which is limited, you know what I mean. But after yeah. nineteen and a half years of being a doc student, to this, any kindness, any love is not for me at all. It is straight the grace of God. You, you don't have to call it God. You can call it whatever you want. You know what I mean? Capital L, love. So, yeah. So, if any letting go, anytime the mind tells me uh, to say something, let's say someone says something that, like you said, pisses, that trigger, and pisses me off and I want to say something back and I don't, Yeah. that is 100%. That is a miracle, honestly, straight up. Because the ego, without that spiritual energy counterbalancing it, the ego would, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, would, yeah. So any forgiveness, any love, any compassion, any kindness, any yeah, any gentleness, anything that you know is shown to anyone is to this understanding is an expression of divinity. That simple. It doesn't come from the ego. So it's all grace. It's all grace. Whether one wants to call it that or not, it's a different deal. 
but that's yeah that's this understanding so yeah it sounds oh, out of curiosity though why are you labeling it as like a, a neutral term you know because the ego definitely wants to label it as like you know why not say it like focusing on the fear why do you use okay this like focus on the energy because okay to this understanding all the negative energies come out of one field mm. to call it fear for example or something like that first of all is to give it reality and you know to give it a context instead there is just energy the energy of emotion you could say the energy of emotion that's it to call it specifically that it's a, to this understanding it's a limitation it's a limitation you know what i mean uh and, and as and as the energy is let go as the energy is let go it begins to seemingly change quality mm. so as you know so let's say anger comes up and there's like this and i start letting go let it, and it starts you know some of it starts being dissolved and then it starts to change and then it looks more like a pride so to call it yeah. to label it that is to limit it instead it's all the same there's only one energy mm. just like there's only love <laughs> There's only the field of love, which may express itself. Here is courage. Here is you know loving your your dog. You know what I mean. It, over here, being kind to your neighbor. Over here, helping a woman across the street. Whatever. But it's it's all the same. It's all one. So the negative energies is not its own thing. It's more like it's a lack of that. You know, there's like seemingly only love. So, yeah. So even the demonic, even that which is seemingly loveless. So there's just love. And it's like there's the one sun shining, and then there's clouds more and more and more and more, more. And then and then at some point the clouds block the sunshine so much that one doesn't feel the light, right? And that yeah. could be called demonic. But all that, but it's not like it's its own reality. It's that it's a lack of love. There's only love, and then and then you know obstructions to it. So like clouds blocking the sun. So another thing, the same sun is shining in all beings. So if I don't feel the sun shining in you if i don't feel the warmth of the sun shining in you if i don't feel the light of the sun it's not because it's not shining it's not because it's not there it's because i have not evolved my own clouds have not dissolved enough where i could feel the light from you that's simple that just means there's more work to do for example the news you know there's a spiritual state where one can watch the news and be joyful and laugh you know i am not at that level so the problem is not the news the problem is my own reaction so as of now out of love for myself and the world because i don't if i'm angry or like emotion that doesn't help anybody so out of compassion for the world and for myself i stay away from the news but that's an avoidance it's not been transcended because when it's fully transcended then i can watch it or not watch it it's a so what like doc talks about a free being can walk into a casino play whatever $500 win or lose and be completely not affected that is freedom to, to avoid it as not spiritual it still it still owns me you know what I'm saying same yeah. thing with drugs same thing with drugs running away from a drug it still owns me running away from alcohol it still owns me the, you know what I mean the goal like for example part of my job I give tours in Sedona and uh I give tours of one of the things I give tours is a winery where they make wine. Remember, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Right? I'm an alcoholic giving tours of a winery. And it's so what? It can be wine, it can be cocaine, it can be sugar, it can be flour, it can be heroin. So what? That mm. so whatness only comes from from divinity, but whatever you want to call it, only comes from only from the divine for this experience. Only. So yeah. avoiding it, like avoiding it and going, ah. You know, there are, I know people in AA who are in AA for 20 years that seemingly did not do the 12 steps, did not do spiritual work, and they avoid it. They see a bar and they go, oh my God. You know what I mean? That's that's not freedom. Yeah. That's not freedom. It still owns one. It still owns one. You know? Yeah, you're still true reacting to it rather than acting. 100%. True spiritual freedom, true spiritual freedom is is not is not like our you know as doc said no attractions no versions so if it's like mm, or yeah. i'm going or uh, it still owns me <laughs> yeah you know? so you know at this point like you know i used to shoot heroin you can take heroin on a spoon you can take sugar on a spoon and put them in front of me and so what Be 
now, if I stop living to the best of my ability to spiritual life, I start being shady, I start watching porn, I start lying and all that stuff, you know what happens? Is that needle, that drug starts to look good, better and better and better and better. But it's not because the drug looks better, it's because of my own spiritual state. So how a drug or a drink or pornography or whatever else looks to me has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with my own spiritual mm-hmm. state. So, you know, so part of the path is we take responsibility for our own spiritual state instead of saying that, the, that I'm, you know, I want it because of the drug. I don't want it because of the drug. You understand? So anyway, that, that understanding. So, yeah. Uh, so I wanted to understand your perspective on faith. Like, you know, like what is okay. faith? And like a, from your experience, like to have faith in something, like what does that mean to you? Like, how do you have faith in something that, because faith is like, you believe in something that you have no like evidence of, at least that's the context, right? Of that word. Mm. That's, it says that in the Bible, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So every person lives by faith. Yeah. The only, the only question is faith in what, right? That's, that's not me being smart. Yeah, yeah. That's my teacher. And actually, actually it's, the Lord in more than one expressions, Bhagavad Gita and all that, every person lives by faith. You know, some people have faith in the intellect, in yeah. science. Some people have faith in uh, in atheism, in, uh, you know, like everyone, had, you know, some people have faith in drugs. I know for years I had faith in drugs. Some people have faith in sex, you know what I mean, and all that. Uh, so, that's a good question. You know, I don't think I've ever been asked that. What is faith? Wow. Since I, you know, this soul at this point has not reached enlightenment. He yeah. does not know God experientially. He still has an ego, and that ego, and all egos are the same. That ego hates God, competes with God for sovereignty, tries to be God. You know, this ego doesn't just want to, uh, you know, it doesn't just, it doesn't just want to be approved of it wants to be applauded it wants to be worshipped that's the that's speaking for this one this ego wants to be worshipped and no matter how much spiritual work one does the na- oh that's another thing no matter how much spiritual work one does the nature of the ego does not change not even one iota so you know this this addict has been doing spiritual work seemingly for 19 years 19 ish years right so the same ego that was there 19 years ago when it was shooting heroin and you know 20 years ago screwing people over and being not integrous and unloving and just lying everything this that same ego is the same ego that is speaking to you right now and if this addict stays sober for another 20 years by grace and does spiritual work uh, you know by grace for another 20 years that ego will be the same as this one and that one the, the nature mm-hmm. of the ego does not change even one iota so all egos from the lowest to the highest are all selfish. They all hate God. They all fear God. They all want to uh, compete with God. Okay. What does change, and yeah. this is actually, you know, this was revealed recently. Uh, what does change by great is the dominance. The dominance of the ego changes. The nature of the ego does not change to this understanding until it dies. Until, at, until enlightenment, when the ego dies. But the actual nature of the ego does not change even a little bit. So what does change is the dominance, meaning the ego 19 years ago, the same ego that is here now, dominated this consciousness a lot more than it does now by grace. Yeah. And hopefully 20 years from now, if he's still surviving, all of a sudden he's sober, our, that ego will dominate even less. But the actual nature of the ego does not change. So that helps for compassion with others and with self. Because, you know, some of the spiritual work tries to be unconditional, loving, blah, 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 and then still, like, why, why am I so hateful? Why am I so selfish? <laughs> you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. Because the nature of the ego doesn't change. That's, a, that's like, for this understanding, a very important point for, uh, for compassion, for self and others. So that's that very interesting. Ev- everyone's ego is the same. From the, so the serial killer, you know, I may have not been, by grace, a serial killer, at least in this lifetime, right? But his ser- the serial killer ego and this ego are the same. The only difference is, by grace, his seemingly dominates much more 
than this one does. So if, you know, this consciousness dropped to that level and be dominated by it as much, he would be a serial killer also. And if his consciousness were whatever, like, you know, uh, transformed by the self and more, and he got to this level, he would be like me. So, like, the only reason that one is not a serial killer or rapist or a Hitler or whatever, whatever else is grace. So, but everyone's ego is the same. So the rapist, sorry to say, the rapist, the animal abuser, for years, I, I would, you know, when I was sober before, yeah, uh, I was an officer in, in Florida. And specifically investigating animals, anything to do with animals, specifically animal cruelty, specifically animal cruelty, seeing the worst of humanity, you know, and just some of the things people like how someone can be so loveless. Like, that. And after doing that for seven years, one day I said, I can't do it anymore. I tried to bring light, but from some of the, just the lovelessness. Like, the can you loveless. like share like one of the experiences that stuck with you? I mean, I'm just curious. Like, they're graphic. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. 18 plus content, guys. You could skip. Yeah. Ah, so dealing. For example, we dealt with dog fighters. We dealt with dog fighters. So people who make money, dogs, uh, pit bulls, fight till death. Whoa. Fight to death. So there'll be two dogs you asked <laughs> two dogs yeah. one is obviously much bigger and more aggressive than the other one yeah they throw them in and by their own nature they can't not fight that's just their nature that's how they're trained since they're a little baby to, to you know and usually these dogs are very kind to humans but they see another dog they go crazy right so so i remember more than once more than more than a hundred times probably you know one would dominate the other one and hurt the other one the other one would run away and would cry and the owner of that dog even though it had no chance would take it and throw it back in there it would get ripped up some more and then it would run and cry and he over and over can you imagine like the lovelessness to do that like the dog wanted out it was crying please you know like in, the, in its human oh, anyway you asked <laughs> you asked yeah, yeah. so dealing so it's one thing for me to say for him like that guy's in what a jerk yes Agreed. You know, to even think about that. But if I'm honest with myself, I have the same ego as that person. The exact same ego. And if I was at his level of consciousness, I would do the exact same thing. So me not doing that and not being that way is only because of grace. It's not because of anything in my ego. Because, you know, that ego that's not dominated seemingly by compassion throws dogs in to be ripped apart till death, till it's dead. Can you imagine? Till death. You know? Uh, yeah. So, dealing with that. So, the limitation, it seems like it's easy for me to say what a jerk that guy is. You know? But if I hate him for his jerkness, I'm really hating myself because I have the same ego. So, that's part of the spiritual path for this one is to take responsibility to own the collective ego. All. All ego. There's nothing, like you said, in the dinosaurs. There's nothing that existed in the dinosaurs that does not exist in this one today and right now. And in the in the right context, it would act like a dinosaur. In the right context, it would act like that jerk throwing in a, a, a crying dog over and over and over. So if I'm not doing that, it is only, mm. it is literally a miracle. So, to, you know, instead of being prideful that I'm spiritual... You know, no, I'm not. I have a narcissistic ego that has no compassion and does not care about anyone else, just like every other ego. But by gr I have grace in the form of love. To even think about doing that makes me, you know what I mean? But that's only because of grace. So anyway, more words. No, I understand. Uh, so it sounds like that, that's a very interesting point because every person who tries to, at least initially, at least that was me, uh, whenever I try to understand the concept of letting go, I was trying to understand, okay, how, okay, how can I change this ego? You know, mm. how can I change this ego to like, not do what it's good. doing? You know, good luck. 
so yeah so i was like okay so this is not going to work which is why the final step is like you know what this is human this is what being human is my idea of what human being is is not real what i'm actually experiencing right now like this is what's real you know and uh, there's something beautiful about that i guess because you're accepting like an aspect of reality without trying to change it and i think there's something uh, so you get the feeling of letting go but why the, but the question i'm asking is like why do you call it letting go because you're not actually letting go of something maybe you're actually letting go of something but what is it that you're actually letting go of okay so remember we talked about the scale of consciousness yeah right from 1 to 1000 okay yeah so it it seems like in all beings including the what feels like the demonic loveless dog fighter even that the same sun is shining the same sun is shining in all beings right it's not like a different sun it's all the same sun the only difference is the clouds yeah the clouds block in the sun but like so the spiritual work doesn't cause the sun to shine or we don't get a sun from somewhere else into us that's shining instead the spiritual work is instead of getting anything new we're letting go of that which is not the truth that which is not the truth then starts to dissolve like clouds revealing the sun which is shining all along so the same sun i like that that's you know well that's our teacher it's believe me uh it may be in this context you know it's this but uh, all credit goes to our teacher to Dr. David Arkins. Yeah. Anyway, so so the same sun that's shining in the dog fighter, which is a great example because, right? And the same sun that's shining in this consciousness and the same sun that's shining in Mother Teresa even there even joy, Lord Jesus Christ, okay? It's the same sun. The only difference is the clouds. So if enough clouds dissolve, you know, one gets to the level of Mother Teresa, for example. and if one adds clouds put clouds you know what i mean then one drops to my level a big drop and then even lower drops to the dog fighter so the whole path is not about getting anything new and not getting from anything outside or you know elsewhere instead the path seemingly is yeah is the letting go of that which is not the truth it's not getting the truth it's that which is not the truth and one of the major blocks major blocks one could say is negative emotion which come into p- opinions and all that that's another part letting go of all opinions all opinions all positions all that that's an, the willingness to let go of all opinions that's a, that's for this that's a major part every cuz every opinion has like on one side of it is the right and one side is the wrong so everything on the right is worthy of love everything on the wrong is not worthy of love so with every single opinion i have every you know uh what i'm doing is i'm putting a cloud in front of the sun which is fine i can do that if my goal is to you know to ha- to have opinions that's fine this student's goal is to be his next goal is to be unconditionally loving and the way to become unconditionally loving and this is for the for for those who calibrate at 1000 uh is the letting go of all belief systems all opinions all right and wrong all good and evil all that letting go yeah because every single one of those is a limitation to love every single one of those is a cloud blocking the sun so and this student wants the sun he wants to be the sun to all beings you know so uh so the way to be the sun to this and the saying is not to become the sun but to let go of the not sun so that's yeah. why letting go that's why I let it go so it's not like i'm getting something new instead i'm letting go of the old so the buddha talked about like a uh, um fetters like you know one has anchors like you know a ship has anchors you know heavy weights and as one lets go he talked about desire but as one lets go like the anchors drop so one goes higher and higher in the ocean you know what i mean so it's not like one gets uh compassion instead one lets go of non compassion <laughs> it's not yeah. like one gets love one lets go of non love and then naturally one becomes more loving so anyway. so how does this relate uh, so i have two questions so why is ego yeah. trying to like create clouds like what is the expectation of ego because i think that's like a like what does ego want in like that analogy 
All right, you're asking. Okay, so first I've learned from my teacher. Yeah. yeah. Why is why? Not? So yeah, it's the nature of the ego since the beginning of time. For each ant, by the way, every single ant in this consciousness, you know, trying to become enlightened, it's the same ego. That's like an important point to know. It's the same ego in all animals, all cats, flies, insects, but all, all, it's the same ego. That's an that's a important thing to know. So, okay. So uh, it, the nature of the ego is to survive and it survives by getting, by getting and grasping. So like that, that all egos, you know, the, whether it's, you know, the animal getting food, getting you know, it's like if you look at a cat, it, it smells everything a dog. You know what I mean? The nature yeah. of the ego is to be curious and to get. Okay. So, so, well, when one is seeking divinity, mm -hmm. one really, as one, you know, lets go of things more and more and more and more, one gets to the point where they're willing to, Lord, please make it so, willing to... I mean, in some traditions, it's called die to self, but, you know, one is willing to give up control. So that's part of letting go, letting go of control. So, you know, our teacher talks about there's no such thing as a problem. So every single problem in life is coming from a desire, from what I want something. For example, even some, like there's no such thing as a real problem outside of desire. So let's say I'm in the ocean drowning it seems like a problem that's coming from the position that i want to live <laughs> you yeah. know and i want to breathe i want to breathe so it's the attachment to that wanting to live and wanting to breathe that makes it seem like a problem if that is let go then it's a so what so everything in life is a so what what makes it a not so what is this negative energy so letting go so like if i put on green glasses everything looks green similarly uh even the greatest attachments in life only look that way, only look that way because of the negative energy I have. So in letting go, one lets go more and more. In other words, in other words, the clouds, the yeah. clouds. So when one does letting go more and more and more, the clouds start to evaporate. And yeah. as the clouds start to evaporate, you know, uh, also in the spiritual path, it feels like uh, things are being ripped out of one's hands. That's another thing, especially when someone was not spiritually aligned before and then starts, you know, uh, you know, aligns, becomes spiritually oriented. It one's life changes drastically and it feels like one's life is being ripped out of their hands. But this is important for this understanding. It is not the removal. It is the clinging. The more I cling, the more that which is going to be removed anyway, the more I cling, the more it feels yeah. like it's being ripped out. But it's not being ripped out. It's my clinging. So the the energy, the seeming mistake is that it's being removed. No, it's because I'm clinging to it. So another part of the letting go is the non-clinging. Even later on to life itself, to existence, even the non-clinging to existence, which is not easy. I'm not even close to there. But that's the that's the North Star, which I love. You know? So yeah. the clinging. So it's the clinging that makes, yeah. So everything in life. The trauma is not from the thing itself. It's from the clinging. And the clinging comes from this negative energy. So the letting go, one lets go more and more of this negative energy. And what naturally, one's clinging becomes less and less and less. Okay. Seemingly. Yeah. That's just how so, this looks. Yeah. So this is where the concept of surrender is also coming. So you're actually surrendering to like the nature of love almost, which is like not controlling. Yes. I love that. Right. Oh, the surrendering to the nature of love. I love that. Not yeah. control. I love that. Hundred percent. Capital L. Love. Yeah, of course. Capital L. You know. Capital L. Uh, <laughs> definitely not. Of course. <laughs> like <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, yeah. So you know, we hear falling in love. Yeah. But you know, uh, it's really falling in love with a small L or falling in attachment. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, I, okay, a nature, a couple expressions of love. One is like, if I know, let's say you and I are talking, and I and intuition says you want something. Yeah. First of all, the willingness to give it to you, and let's say yes, I'm willing. To, 
to not wait till you ask, to not wait mm -hmm. till you ask me for it, but instead to offer it. Yeah. Just to like be that, you know, if I know someone wants something, you know what I mean? If you're intu intuitively, you know, first, and I'm willing to give it, ask for the willingness to give it. And if I'm willing to give it, I don't wait till I try to the best of my ability to not wait till the person asks me for it because that changes the energy and then putting them in the position, you know, uh, I offer. So mm -hmm. that's an expression of love. Another expression of love. Another expression of love, you know, big L to little L is, you know, with attachment, like for example, you know, I have a beautiful woman in my life, for example, uh, the small L, you know, when someone looks at her, the ego yeah. gets angry, jealous, insecure, and wants to cling, and wants to, right? The capital L, first of all, takes joy that somebody else likes her and wants her, you know? Takes joy in that, that somebody else wants what I have or wants what I love, right? And then there's a desire to, like, almost show her off. You know what yeah. I mean? So the, so, you know, so uh, the ego wants to hide. You know, I'm sure you've been, I've been in a relationship like that where, uh, you know, the the love more and more from this consciousness was emanating, the divine love, which has nothing to do with me, uh, was emanating more and more, and more which, you know, to some, and there's a shine. And I remember being with someone who, not not disrespecting her, just, but uh, would be intimidated and, you know, would seemingly would think that, you know, be, the, the brighter one shines, the the quick, you know, that someone's going to take that which shines away from them. So, so like, you know, if, yeah. So the desire to like show the world, to show off to the world, not show off like pridefully, yeah. but like to say, look, look at this, you know what I mean? To show off the flower in the case of a woman, uh, in a, you know what I mean? To show the world, look how beautiful that is compared to like wanting to cover her so that nobody else takes her away. You know what I'm saying? So like that, so that's one of the differences seemingly between love, capital L and small L. When the ego loves, in quotes, you know what I mean? It's always afraid of loss. Capital L is solid. Capital L is solid. Yeah. You know I mean? if, you, if, if, for example, it's, I'm, I'm talking about a girl, but, you know, if her and I are solid, and then if other people appreciate her, that's wonderful. That's what, like, yeah. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, sounds like you put, trust her a lot, so it doesn't affect uh, the thing. Yeah, the relationship. And if, it, and if that's if that can affect the relationship, then odds are, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah, because love is concrete. The capital L is concrete. It's unwavering. It's not. You know what I mean? It's it's a stable as our you know as Doc said. It's a stable energy field. I can say it's the most stable energy field, and the and the heart. Is loving no matter what, you know. As Doc writes, uh, you know, the mind disagrees, you know, finds reasons and all that stuff. The heart is loving no matter what, and mm. that's what I want to be. I want to be loving no matter what. And part of, and one of the ways to know to become that is letting go, hundred percent, by this letting go yeah. of negative emotion. By the energy comes up, ask for more of it. And walk into it straight ahead, uh, and ask for more, and ask for more, and ask for more. That to you know uh, is the fastest for to I you know in 19 years I tried many many different techniques for this for this part calling upon the avatar, calling upon Jesus, calling whatever, but whoever wants calling out God, but doesn't make a difference. Calling on the heart, even calling upon the heart, uh, and jumping into that energy into that field, whatever, that feeling that right here with with God taking responsibility for it, asking for more of it. That's another one. Asking for more of it, not following the mind. And not follow, that by far is, of all the spiritual practices this student has ever done, that is by far, by far the most powerful. You know? There so it's, is like, a, it's like... Uh -huh. No, there's also yeah, like a I, practice I, where rather asking for God, you can also just ask like what color is this, you know, and let your subconscious just give you a color and also like ask, okay, what color do I want? Uh, so what color like utilize this and your subconscious will like still give you like an answer. So you can like call upon like even colors as well. Like, just, okay. this is, like, crazy. I mean, if, if no, if that, 
if that if one identifies with that, you know, like I'm, it, you I'm, know, I'm feeling blue. One, ah, you've got a blue shirt on. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's and true. a blue bottle. That's, That's hilarious. Uh, You're wearing a blue shirt so, as well, yeah. right? Uh, it's just stained. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious uh yeah so like for example in you know i'm sure you guys know in the bhagavad gita you know uh krishna so you know every you know the major religions have a certain being that once calibrated at 1000 and then after that a religion started so of course christianity jesus christ you know buddhism the buddha so to this understanding uh you know in the in the hindu tradition had a few actually. One of them was Krishna. So anyway, in the uh, in uh, the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, which I love. He says, "He says, in whatever form you worship me, in that form I will appear to you." Think how beautiful that is. In whatever form you worship me. So if it's colors, if I worship, if you know what I mean, if I'm coming from the heart yeah. as the color blue, then I will. You know what I mean? Then he will reveal himself as the color blue. Like just how awesome is that? Yeah, like I, you know. I, I think there's something that. about the experience where just asking sincerely for help and honestly admitting, you know, yes. you want help and then asking yes. sincerely for help. I think your yes. mind itself gives 100%. you a, like an answer, even if you don't believe in anything. You uh, know? 100%. With humility. 100%. Yeah, with humility. Yeah. So another thing Doc, you know, teaches, you know, is unless one is experienced, the ultimate real and unless one is pretty much uh it has become enlightened to this level of consciousness uh then one it is safe to assume that one knows nothing and that all supposed knowledge is but ignorance and pride that's the that's the quote so that stays because that helps with the humility that whatever you know i want to experience god and not what my own mind's perception of what that is so to come from a i don't know this you know, so like what you said, you know, you know, like another thing, another block, another cloud seemingly blocking the sun is everything I think I know. So yeah. in AA, there's there's a, you know, one of the prayers, it's called a lay aside prayer. Lord, please lay aside for me everything I think I know about myself, about the 12 steps and about you, oh Lord. You know what I mean? Like, because every one of those things I think I know is a cloud blocking the sun. So, uh, yeah. Wow. So, and and the more one pra the more one studies, the more knowledge one learns, but also mm. the more pra block sun the clouds blocking the sun. <laughs> yeah, so, that's such right? a beautiful analogy. I mean, that's crazy. That's like a really, it's a uh, it really resonates with me. So let me ask you a last question, and I'll let you go. Uh, okay. which is uh, so. For people wondering, even after like watching this far, you know, they're like, why, why, why the fuck should I let go? No, fuck it. Why, why should I, I like engage with this practice? You know, like what is like your response to that? Like, you know, why? That's hilarious. <laughs> well, first of all, if anybody watches this whole interview, well, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Um, Why did you, you know, what was the yeah. like breaking point for you where you were like, fuck, I think I have to like, you know. Well, see, we all have our own paths to God, seemingly. Yeah. For yeah. some it's addiction. For some it's addiction. And, you know, and the, but not for everyone. You know, for yeah. this one, it was the realization that in the pathway of addiction, one gets to a point where one either gets God or one dies. That's simple. Very simple. So, uh, you know, uh, other people have a seemingly a third option for this one. Either I get God or I stick a needle in my arm. I have tried to prove that wrong many, 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 many times. It's okay. Like, so, did you know you were going to die that, by doing this? I, of course. You mean uh, shooting? Of course. Yeah, and let me tell you also about addiction. So I remember using, and if someone overdosed and died... Like a bunch in of drug addicts would find out. What? In front of I'm you, saying, you mean? No, I'm saying, yeah, or like if I heard someone did some dope somewhere and they died from from an overdose, right? Yeah. That means it's good stuff. 
So I go there. Do you understand? Oh my <laughs> that's God. like that's the kind of thought. Believe me, and that's any real addict understands that. Oh, he died. So I know as an addict, I wanted to get as close to death without that. Like, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's hilarious, but that that's true. Sim but that energy then in the spiritual path, you know, that same energy. You know. Uh, so to answer why should one first of all, one doesn't have to let go. One doesn't have to do shit, honestly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh However, you know, the same sun is shining in all beings. The clouds are blocking. You know, if, you know, if this, you know, one wants, one gets to the point where one wants, you know, I can tell you for this, he wants the warmth in the sun and he doesn't, and he wants all clouds to be dissolved. For, er, for all clouds to be dissolved, everything that is a cloud has to come up, you know, Doc teaches for if I want to be unconditionally loving, for example, everything that's not of love has to come up to be healed. Everything. So one starts doing spiritual work and feels a hatred sometimes that they never felt before they started. That's part of the thing. That's because one is now ready. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, similarly, so why should one let go? I can tell you from an experiential point of view, even a little bit of this practice, the joy that comes and the peace and the fearlessness and the just is, you know, is worth it. But usually someone has to be pretty broken, like you said, at a bottom to even get to that point. Uh, also, you know, we were talking about, we have a group that meets every day. On yeah. Zoom. It's okay. It's a doc study group. All are welcome. Links it's in the free, description of course. and the comments. Okay. Okay. It's free first. Yeah. Always, of course. Uh, and we meet every single day at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So 8 a.m. Arizona Really? Time. Every single day? Every, every single day. I host wow. it on Fridays. I host it today. I host it today. Oh. Uh, but every host, part of being a host is being a sweetheart. All right? You never, ever have to turn on your camera. You never have to say anything to anyone. It's okay to come late and leave early. It's okay to like be driving to work, turn on the group for three minutes, and then and then get off. Whatever, even a few minutes in the field completely changes the day. Okay, yeah. on Fridays after group, when I host on Fridays after group, we uh, do a letting go practice where this student leads the letting go that we talked about today in detail. It's okay to skip the whole freaking group and just come to that whatever, and often we watch a doc lecture afterwards. So. It's an open invitation. I'll, if you want, I'll give you the link or whatever, or you can yeah, put yeah. it. Anyone is welcome in any capacity. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to speak English. You don't have to have a book. You don't have, you don't have to be sober. <laughs> Once in a while, people come drunk. So what? Welcome. Who cares? In any context. <laughs> in any any context. Okay. In any yeah. context. For however long, in any capacity, welcome. Even if it's for 30 seconds, welcome. All right? Yeah. So I just wanted to say that. So And it's, it is... Out, you know, anybody who knows the teachings of Doc, like it is outside of being in the presence of my teacher, he passed away in 2012. Outside of being in his presence, this is the closest I have found to his energy, which is sweet, uh, non pretentious. That's a major thing. No, like, you know, non pretentious, uh, you know, loving and also hilarious. Sometimes the group is hilarious. So, anyway, okay. You get the point. I'll send you the thing. If you want to put it, that would be awesome. The comments. Yeah, it's in the yeah. it'll be in the comments and the description below. So guys, do check out. Okay. That's how I actually found Eric, and he was sharing about letting go, and I'm like, damn, this is like an amazing story. I gotta have him like on oh. my YouTube channel and kind of like share his process, thoughts, and stuff like that. So thank you so much, Eric. Oh. I mean, I, I don't you. know how many people are gonna watch this, but you definitely changed something uh. the way I look the world. You know, so there's one one person yeah. impact. Yeah. I love you. And if nobody watches it, that's okay. I get to talk about our teacher and God. No, there's like one and person who didn't watch it, it, it's me, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, thank you so yeah. much. And and if it does anything, definitely the, the doc study, but if it's going to consider checking out Dr. David R. Hawkins, I tell you, it's from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Consider checking out. For 19, almost 19 and a half years that I tried to, this ego tried to find flaws in his in him or in his teachings and after 19 years it just it stopped i haven't found one 
So, okay. So anyway, and I, and I love you, Prem. Thank you for, and also everything that was said by this entity, grain of salt. It's just how it looks at this time to this consciousness. That's it. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. right or wrong. It's just, it's just what it looks like. That's it. So I did this same interview 10 years from now might be completely different. Maybe not. Yeah. So uh, anyway, and I love we'll you. We'll do a 10 years check up, well guys, you know, so 10 years later, I'll bring you ah. on. I'm like, so let's reflect on your previous yeah. interview, Eric, you know? Yeah. Yeah. if i'm in prison if i'm in prison or something you know behind bars yeah. then then you'll yeah. be like okay not gonna follow that yeah <laughs> i told you that. no that would actually attest is like i told you prem even after like 19 years of spiritual practice the ego never yeah. changed i'm behind prison <laughs> no and, no and <laughs> if we and if we and in 10 years from now if we if we have the blessing of meeting and doing another interview right i can tell you the same ego is going to be there too <laughs> so yeah, yeah definitely doesn't change. Doesn't change. Thank you so much. I love you, brother. Yeah, thanks so much. So, bye bye.